Howdy, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry I hadn't been on in a while, but... You know, the... The entire reason... Why I might, uh... Take a... Blackout week from recording is just because... There's so much going on. I don't have time to research stuff. I'm always thinking about stuff, but I... If it's something I want to put out here, I want it to either be accurate or thought-provoking. If it's just something, you know, hey, like, I don't know the answer to this, what are your thoughts, you know? Thought-provoking. Um, all that said, you know, kind of keeping up on the news today, I don't know where it's going to lead yet, but, uh... <clears throat> with the Fauci emails coming out and networks kind of admitting there may have been something to a lab leak regardless of whether it was gain of function research or not or um, Dr. Fauci and the CDC and the WHO going after simply testing and inoculating against COVID they weren't working on treatments for COVID patients You know, I listened to an interview, a doctor that thankfully had a a fairly loose place of practice as far as uh, regulations where he could try treatments that he knew worked on similar illnesses, but not necessarily were approved for COVID as far as like, you know, well, there haven't been the trials and the medical studies and, you know, well, if you see this, here's the prescribed treatment. If you see that, you do this. If this happens, you add that on to it. All that stuff. So he was able to do standard safe treatment regimens that we know work for, you know, inflammation, breathing difficulty, things like that early on before people were um, in dire shape from COVID. And... <clears throat> said that he saw out of people that came in, he saw a reduction in people that came into the hospital with severe COVID symptoms. Those that did need to be hospitalized, the rates that he had were lower than other doctors as far as those that had to go on ventilators and he also had lower death rates in his hospital. In this particular instance, a ounce of prevention was worth the pound of cure. Um, and then, you know, the Fauci emails, you know, back and forth on masks and, uh, things that he had evidence of, you know, human to human transmission early on, uh, had evidence that it didn't come from Chinese wet markets, whether it was a lab leak or not, on and on and on all this goes, <clears throat> pardon me, on and on and on all this goes. My hope is that COVID is on the way out, numerically speaking. In the state of Kentucky, there's like a 41, and I checked, I actually checked this the other day. I was talking with a buddy of mine in the UK, comparing notes internationally on COVID and just talking long-term pen pound. Um... As of last week, the state of Kentucky was at like a 41% fully vaccinated rate and just under, just under, just over 50% have had the first dose. Plus, there are some people that are immune to it and there are also some people that have caught it and have the immunity for however long they have it. I hope that the people that screwed up, that lied, that deceived the American people, if, if they did, if they did, if they screwed up, if they lied, if they deceived the American people, if they did not apply the rules to themselves as they did to others, if they did not, um, I 
commend their actions and reactions to COVID based on science and if they did things just for the sake of doing things and just for the sake of being in power. I hope all those people are truly held accountable, whatever that looks like. You know, whether it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, in Fauci's case, you know, he was talking, he did a lot of uh, heated discussions with Senator Paul of the state of Kentucky. Sorry, my cooler moved around in the back. Sorry for all the racket. You know, he had a lot of heated discussions with Senator Paul. I don't know if those were under oath or not, but if the emails that he was sending contradicts what he was saying at the time that he was saying it in those Senate hearings, and if he was under oath, he should be up on perjury charges, period. I don't know if he was. Um, you know, a lot of people, Gretchen Whitmer was busted numerous times for enacting stupid restrictions that had nothing to do with COVID. Uh, I think that she needs to be sued personally. That's my opinion. I think she does. Um, one of the, here's one of the stupid things that she did where uh, <clears throat> the rules had nothing to do with COVID. Um, going to have to preface this. One of the guys I listened to in podcasting used to live in her state. He, Michigan has the highest rate of dual home ownership in the state. And what a lot of this is, is when the economic boom hit in Michigan, everybody lived around Detroit, Dearborn area. They bought property out in the middle of nowhere, built lake houses and lake cottages. Fair. Those houses and cottages got bequeathed in the inheritance along with everything else. So there's a lot of dual home ownership in Michigan. If you were at your little lake cottage that you didn't want to stay in and you wanted to go to your place in suburbia, when the lockdowns hit, you couldn't do that. Whether the house, whether there was a grocery store close or not, whether you had internet there or not and had the telecommute, whatever, that was a rule. And on the flip side, if you were laid off work, and lived in the middle of everything and you wanted to get out of Dodge, you couldn't legally go to your lake house. Another thing, you could boat if you wanted to in Michigan, but you couldn't use a powered boat. You know, if I were the citizen, if I were the law-abiding citizens of Michigan, I would try to file a class action suit for a refund on the taxes. I pay property taxes. It is mine. I get to use it when and how I want. My house and my boat. I get to use it how and when I want. I pay taxes on my vehicle. I pay road taxes. I get to use them when and how I want legally. You don't get to tell me, no, 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 you don't get to travel to your house and, you know, pay for the gas and you pay for the road with tax money and you pay the property taxes and everything else to get, no, you don't get to tell me that. I think they should file a class action lawsuit for a refund on the property taxes. My opinion. I think it would make I don't think it'd go anywhere. I think it'd make a statement. And I also think she needs to be voted out. You know, if Fauci was under oath, he needs to be brought up on perjury charges based on what I know. My opinion. That's kind of what I got. I hope that the people that I hope that everyone's held accountable. And on the flip side of that. If you've got, if any of the governors or public health officials or elected representatives, whatever they are, <clears throat> they did a good job, they asked the right questions, they did the right things, and they were flexible because, like, okay, I get that when COVID first started and when it first came into the United States and we started seeing all these outbreaks, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know what we were dealing with. We didn't know how bad this would be. In my opinion, at that, at that point, there's nothing wrong with going crazy. And, you know, two weeks to flatten the curve, lock everything down, um, make it possible for everybody to stay home, all that stuff. I had no problems with that early on. As things drug on and we learned more 
I think that the people that didn't follow the new data coming in should be held accountable. I think the people that follow the new data and, oh, well, we can keep six feet apart and we can, you know, mask up or not mask up based on that science, you know, whatever, you know, whatever they did that was actually following the silence, science, not keeping people locked up in their homes, but on the flip side, not overloading hospitals, not keeping people unemployed, letting them go back to work, letting employers make that decision, letting employers figure out a way to keep their employees safe, keep their customers safe, all that stuff. If the leader, if public officials and leaders did that, they deserve recognition for doing the right thing. If they didn't, they deserve to be called out on it. That's what I got for today, folks. And I hope it happens. I hope it does. I hope the leaders that did the right thing and followed the science and were flexible and weren't uh, ideologically driven by a virus get the recognition they deserve for not being ideologically driven by a virus. Catch y'all next time, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another Cruise of Smooth. If you like the content I've been putting up, if you like the way I think about things, questions I pose, give me a like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to know when new stuff goes up. Uh, if there's anything that you want me to address personally, leave a comment in the comment section if you want my opinion on something even if it's something I'm not familiar with I have time off coming up I'll be glad to do a little little digging y'all take care catch you next time